let's do some work. Let's do some examples. Um, so consider a square plate of dimensions four by four. Now I'm going to use slightly different labeling to as suggested in the question. Now it's it's going to hurt me, but uh, I think it's the right thing to do because um, I want to set you up properly for probably the way to do it in VBA. So in the nodes will correspond to cells on the sheet. So this would be T22. This would be T23. This would be T24. And I think it makes more sense to do it like this. It might mess up uh, me later on, but we'll have to deal with that later. This would be 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4. This would be temperature 4, 2, fourth row, second column. Now you might say, oh, well, that's the third row, but actually the boundary temperatures would go in the first row. Okay. So uh, we, we might have to adjust something on the next page. I, I can pause and fix it then. So um, this is the, the grading I, I suggest. So you can write down nine equations describing the temperatures. Now we um, let's look at the boundary temperature. So 100 on top, uh, 50 to the right, zero below, and 75 to the left. Okay, so you can write down nine equations. Now I'm, I'm not going to write down all of them. I'll just write down along the bottom row. So temperature T42 is equal to the average of the four adjacents. I see T32 on top, T43 beside it, plus zero, plus 75, all divided by four. T43, what are the adjacent temperatures? I see on top T33 plus T44 plus underneath zero, and also T42, all divided by four. And the last one, T44, is equal to the top temperature, T34, plus to the right is 50, underneath is zero, and to the left is T43, all divided by four. Okay, so to implement the Jacobi method, use the previous iteration, or gauss I'll use the latest. Um, as any initial temperature can configuration converges due to the fact the system is diagonally dominant, it doesn't really matter what we start with. So I'm going to take um, the average of the boundaries is 56.25. So that's going to be our initial temperature. Okay, so we're going to take all of them. We write like this, T0, all of the internal ones, um, Ij equal to 56.25. Now maybe we'll just specify that I and J go between 2 and 4 ij equal to 2 to 4. Okay, so that's our initial guess, but it really doesn't matter. Now, one thing that we will talk about is if you use the Jacobi method and say start with 0, then the, inter the intermediate calculations, um, what we're doing, we haven't kind of specified this, we're going to be throwing in the 56.25 into those equations. And then you keep, you get, you get out better approximations to the temperatures, and then you keep feeding them back in. If you feed in the very latest one you have, that's gauss seidel If you feed in the previous values that you calculated in the previous iteration, that's Jacobi. And in the Jacobi method, the intermediate calculations that you have are actually of interest. Um, so if you want to start the plate at zero, that you'd see the heat, uh, the, the plate heating up from zero to equilibrium. Okay, so what are we going to do? Uh, I, okay, so we're going to do Jacobi, um, gauss is faster, or Jacobi if we're interested in intermediate. Yeah, so we're going to have to talk here about um, the Jacobi method just to describe it. So the idea is you have some approximation to your temperatures, which I can write as Tk. And what you do is you feed it into the equations. 
and you get out a better approximation. So, so you say take 56.25 and you've got nine equations here. You feed in 56.25. Now, we, you'll see how we work with Gauss-Seidel. We don't put 56.25 into all of them. Once we've calculated T42, we will put in the very latest value of T42. But basically, you put in the iterations into the equations and eventually that converges. What that means is the iterations get closer and closer together. And when that happens, you're close to the solution. Okay. So hopefully that makes some kind of sense. So uh, we're not going to use any relaxation factor. So let's go. Uh, now we'll take our time. So uh, actually, I need to write down some of those equations. Yeah, I just uh, written down those equations. So the first one we'll calculate it is T42. Okay. So T42. Now that's equal to, uh, you have a formula on the previous page, it involves T32 and T43. Now what we're going to implement, what we're going to substitute in is the, the, the approximations that we have to T32 and T43, which are both 56.25 at this point in time. 56.25 plus 56.25. The other thing I should say is that was all the, the zero, the initial approximation. This now, you put a one on it. This is the first iteration of uh, Gauss-Seidel. And if you look on the formula on the previous page, it's plus 0, plus 75, all divided by 4. And we will approximate this to uh, four significant figures. Okay, so we get 56.25 plus 56.25 plus 75 equals divided by 4. I get 46.88. Okay. Mm, now we don't that yeah we'll we'll be able to fix this uh, the labeling afterwards okay so now we're going to calculate the next iteration to t43 so t43 is equal to the previous t3 or the the very latest t33 which is 56.25 plus the very latest T44, which is also 56.25, plus zero, which doesn't do anything. But then it's plus T42. And the, the Gauss-Seidel method wouldn't use the very latest available T42. So if you use the previous one, 56.25, that would be the Jacobi method. But if you use the very, very latest available one, that's uh, Gauss-Seidel. So we put this into the calculator. 56.25 by 2 plus 46.88 equals, divided by 4, I'm getting 39.85. And hopefully that is down here somewhere. No, because this is probably using a... This is possible. Well, you see, it depends on what order you actually calculate them in. So we won't worry so much um, what's actually going on down there. Um, yeah, so the next one then is T44, first approximation. So T44 is T34, uh, which we don't know anything about yet. So it's we just must say 56.25 plus 50 plus T43. But the very latest T43 is here. So that's 39 0.85 divided by 4 and we'll approximate this to four significant figures 56.25 plus 50 plus 39.85 divided by 4 I get 35.78 okay now there is discrepancies because it, the order that you calculate them matters and that really means that these intermediate temperatures don't really mean anything. So uh, I just try and fix the labeling. I'm going to pause and try and fix the labeling. So I fixed the indices uh, here. Now, as I said, there's, there's going to be disagreement uh, because of the way the order matters. So, but you'll notice like 42 is in a million miles from 39. And what's the other one we calculated? Uh, 35.78 is in a million miles from here. So if you put in the other values, so like there's supposed to be nine equations, we only did three, we're just being lazy, you will get, uh, you keep getting iterations. And look what happens after a while. 
you see that they start to match to so many significant figures. And when that happens, that's convergence. And it means that these numbers down the bottom approximate the solutions of the equations. Yeah. Okay. So we have agreement twice in a row to four significant figures after nine iterations, but this is not using the appropriate stopping rule. This would have been done until I think the difference between the, the iterations and the previous iteration is less than 0 .00, uh, maybe five, something like that. So that the disagreement is in the third decimal place. The labels are different to what we ended up. Yeah, okay, the label is not crucial as long as you're consistent. Labels here are like TXY. Well, the ones we fixed are, we'll call them kind of TXL. Note that the lack of oscillations, uh, so don't worry about the, the relaxation factor. We're just not going to talk about that. So therefore, we have a, a we can actually draw the temperature. I'm, I'm going to pause it to get it all, uh, all my ducks in a row. So I just I just recorded uh, the temperature, so I get something like this. Now I'm just going to give this correct to four significant figures. So one, sorry, not four significant figures, only two, which ends up being the nearest whole number. Okay, so let's do the hottest ones. Um, so I got like sixteen, or I got a good few temperatures altogether. So I got a hundred anyway is hot. I would have to say seventy five is hot. Um, and then I have 79 here, temperature here is 76, temperature here is 70, and then I'm going to go to an orange range of values, um, say 63 here, 56 here, 52 here, and the boundary temperature here is 50, I'm going to go to green temperatures which are a bit colder, 43, 33, 34 and then the coldest down the bottom in blue is zero so this all makes sense if you look at it i mean the coldest 133 it's it's closest to zero and far away from the heat sources the bottom left is warmer than the bottom right because it's closer to 75 than 50 and on the top so you can see that the temperatures in general kind of get warmer as you go to the left except for 33 because 33 isn't near um the 50. And so you get this. Uh, so this is kind of what we're studying. And obviously you can make the step size smaller to make it more accurate. Um, now, a good question is when to stop. So that was kind of getting it correct to four significant figures. Could we have stopped earlier and would have that, ca would have that caused an issue? So for example, when did we get agreement to two significant figures for all of them? So I'm looking across. I'm looking at iterations four to five. No, five to six. No, six to seven. Yeah, so this is when we got uh, convergence to two significant figures. Two significant figures. Now, did, did they end up being the right values? Um, it, I'd have to say it looks like it is the case so yes for all of them yeah so you could talk about getting it to two significant figures to three significant figures to four significant figures etc but they're quite unsophisticated um stopping rules to be honest with you so this is the stopping rule that i'm recommending um so you should stop when the new the absolute value now you need the absolute value and the absolute value of x on vba is abs of x uh, you absolutely excuse the pun need that so uh it should be the, the when the difference between the new and the old uh, is less than 0 0.0005 times the absolute value of the node now it has to hold for all the temperatures so in terms of vba you're thinking about and or something more creative so here is what's written down and this will go in the weekly summary. It turns out if the temperature plate starts, well, actually, I can't really send this until next week uh, or even after Easter. It turns out that if the temperature plate starts off in an, a certain initial configuration, so you're thinking maybe the plate starting at zero degrees, then like what, what are we calculating here is our steady state temperatures. 
So if the temperature is like that, it'll stay like that. But what about when the, temp the plate is initially at zero and heats up? So they'd be the transient temperatures. Now that's more what we're going to look at uh, in the next level, set of lectures. But it turns out that if you use the Jacobi method, so the Jacobi method, you wouldn't use these green very latest values. Um, you would keep using the old values. And if you keep using the old values, then these intermediate calculations, so this is what I mean by the intermediate, they actually have meaning. If you use the Jacobi method, they are the transient temperatures. So they would actually be the, the temperature changing, heating up or cooling down. So we can see here is a, here's another just another example. Um, in terms of the maths of it, right? Like why don't we just why don't we just solve the um, now I've only written down three equations there. Why don't I just solve the linear system? The problem is, of course, you want to be more accurate. You want to go to a smaller step size. So in this one, I think there's 120 variables and 120 equations. And even diagonally dominant, it's like Gaussian elimination, which is AK getting exact solutions is pretty much impossible. But it's no problem for computers to do Jacobi method or Gaussian dial. Okay, so, um, so maybe the top and right of the plate are 20. We'll just finish this off. I've got a hot spot of 100. Okay, and then the bottom and left are at zero. Now, it took 96 iterations of the Jacobi method to get convergence to one decimal place, and computationally, this is no problem for a computer. And this is, yeah, okay. Um, it mightn't have taken so long if I use the relax. Yeah, we're not doing the relaxation factor. Okay. So there's some other things now. I actually, I, I probably should just include this for completeness. But uh, I'm not going to be assessing you on this. If there was no COVID, I would be. So what happens if your boundary is, is irregular? So you end up with something like this. So what you have to do is uh, you have to zoom in. And I think we're going to do something like this. So we need to approximate the second derivative here. Okay. So um, what are we going to do? So remember that... Um, I think we're going to be looking at derivatives yeah so the second derivative is the rate of change of the first derivative so we can approximate the derivative at two different places uh, we can kind of approximate it over this region and over this region so this is i think what we're calling the partial derivative on the right and then we have the partial derivative on the left and I think we can we can work then. So uh, I think what we're going to say here is that this would be delta x and this would be some constant times delta x. And we're basically just going to do rise over run on both of these. And I think we're saying the boundary temperature here is 75. And I think we're saying that this temperature here is T1, just some variable. So um, let's see. So now they're written on the previous page, they're not too hard. So the partial derivative with respect to x, I'm just going to write r instead of right, is equal to the rise, which is t1 minus t, over the run, which is delta x, no bother. And then on the other side, the partial derivative with respect to x on the left is equal to the rise over the run, which would be the temperature minus 75. But here, you'd have to calculate what proportion of the full step size it is, which isn't impossible with a bit of geometry. So you get something like this. So think about um, how to calculate the second derivative. So the second derivative is like the rate of change of this. So it'd be something like... Um, so this is actually called... Um, okay, basically we're going to do a rise over run for the second derivative. So the, it's the rate of change of the derivative. So it should be maybe the, the, the right derivative minus the left derivative. So that's a change in derivative over the change in distance. Now, the change in distance is probably what would catch me out the most. Um, I could maybe do x plus alpha delta x. I'm going to kind of cheat. Yeah, I think that's what we'd probably do. Is it? Yeah, so, yeah, so this is going to be that. 
and this is going to be that. So the thing on the right is the second derivative over here, and the thing on the left is the second derivative over here. So the total distance there is alpha delta x plus delta x, that's delta x times alpha plus 1. And then we get, so the right derivative is t1 minus t over delta x, and the left derivative is t minus 75 over alpha delta x, and you'll have to do some uh, little bit of algebra here to make this nice. I think what you're looking at is you probably need to multiply above and below by alpha delta x. That's probably your best shot at getting this to be anyway nice. So if you do that, you will end up with alpha t1 minus alpha t minus t and then you'll have minus minus 75 which is plus 75 um i'm happy with that and then on the bottom you'll have alpha times alpha plus one delta x squared now i'm not going to examine this i'm just showing you that it can be done and similarly you can show um now obviously the idea is that we can tidy this up where's the two coming from So sure about the two. Can we see a two happening here? I certainly can't. Uh, we won't worry about it too much for today. There's probably something uh, a little missing out, but in theory you can do it. There's probably just some messing to go on, but it can be done. And there's another situation where you can have um, an insulation here. And so what you have is that the derivative there's no there's no heat flow so the derivative of temperature be zero if it's insulated that's another thing but uh just saying that these techniques are out there and they can be done i'm not sure actually what happened here um sure i think what we're going to do next might actually show it though okay so we got one little um so there's some questions oh yeah that's enough for this lecture